Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the latest huge MRP poll to drop last night, commissioned by Best for Britain and featuring in the Sunday Times today, which puts the Tories on fewer than 100 seats and means that some top Tories, including Rishi Sunak himself, are in serious danger of losing their own seat. The only problem is that the poll has a few little flaws which may not do anyone any good. So first thing people do when an MRP poll drops or need to do, especially from a pollster not in the absolute top tier, although Servation are in the second tier, they're fairly decent, is check out a few benchmark results. The overall headline results seem broadly in line with what different polls are saying right now, so it's not badly out. However, there are some individual odd results. So first of all, comparing the MRP poll uh, that YouGov carried out at the end of last year. Now, sure, polling has moved on. Things have gotten worse for the Tories. We'd expect this latest poll to paint a worse picture for them. But some of the results are just so far out. For example, the YouGov poll gave Labour an average of a 12-point lead over the Conservatives across all seats in Britain. The latest Servation poll gives Labour an 18-point lead. That is way more. And because Servation in the past has tended to flatter Labour, uh, it was an ominous, ominous sign for me, especially as the national poll lead has remained roughly where it was between the two polls being carried out. But there were also some odd individual results. So first of all, Bristol Central, key one for the Green Party, um, who are hoping to take the seat from Labour. And the contest is quite close. Um, you know, it's a real contest. The YouGov poll showed the Greens just a few points behind Labour. This Servation poll shows Labour nearly 50 points ahead of the Green Party. This is absolutely not the case. Now, you may say, well, the Green Party are only seriously challenging in a few seats. Really difficult to poll for them, which it is. Um, I'm afraid, sorry, Green Party supporters, MRP polls like this are never going to get a good handle on you. Um, and you may say as well, for the point, you know, for the purposes of most people, does it really matter? You know, the Green Party have a serious shot in like two seats and they're challenging for a couple of more as, as sort of uh, moonshots as well. Does it matter in the grand scheme of things? Well, yeah, it does, actually. Not just because Green Party supporters will be upset. Um, <laughs> the point of an MRP poll is to drill down to constituency level results. They can then be used by political parties to allocate resources, decide which ones need to be target seats, which ones not. Uh, where to stand aside for anti-Tory purposes, and voters and voting groups most especially to decide on where those tactical votes go. There are seats where it really isn't clear who the anti-Tory tactical vote is. And if a poll tells you the wrong one, congratulations, you've now got an extra Conservative MP you didn't need. And there are indeed some important battlegrounds where this has happened. Chelmsford, I know, I, I mentioned this one because I know someone who is clued in and living there saying this is a Lib Dem target all day long. You know, they, they stand a very good chance of unseating the Tories. Even, I think, I'm right in saying, correct me if I'm wrong, the local Labour group, not necessarily noisily, but I think they recognise this and they're planning on helping out neighbouring constituencies where Labour are challenging, because there are some areas around there, around Essex, where Labour are actually challenging. You know, the YouGov poll had it close between Labour and the Lib Dems, this Servation poll has Labour 23 points above the Lib Dems and beating the Conservative candidate. Even taking into account the fact that Labour are likely to be doing better in MRP polls now than three months ago. This is so far out as to be completely unbelievable. And yes, an MRP poll cannot take account of local campaigns, right? So if you've got a local campaign organising tactical voting, of course that's going to throw an MRP poll. They can't take account of that. But this is just too far wrong. And it is a problem because it risks steering tactical voters the wrong way. You know, there were a few other oddities as well. I'm not going to go over all of them. The point is, the headline results are believable. The, the broad results are believable, which means that for most of it, they must be getting it right. Some individual ones are not. But these large MRP polls, they, you know... <laughs> Their value is not so much for headline results. The point of them is to provide reliable information for individual constituencies, and I'm not convinced this one does. That being said, like I say, it may just be a small number uh, where it's getting things wrong, which is why the headline results are broadly in agreement with other pollsters, including the very best ones. 
So if we use it to look at that broader picture, is there anything of value in the poll? Well, for us, yes. Not necessarily for the political parties, although there is for the Conservatives if they pay attention, but they're not paying attention, so. But for us, yes. Servation investigated what would happen if Reform UK stood their candidates down. Not with dodgy crayon maths like David Frost used, but conducted, forming it as part of their poll of voters' views. Now, this is important because you cannot just say, oh, you know, this many Reform UK voters would switch to the Conservatives. Now, no, you can't just say that because a lot of Reform UK voters don't like the Conservatives now. So you need to ask them. You need to find out how many will. So that's important because everyone would like to know what the Reform UK impact is likely to be. And if we accept that the broad results of this poll are believable, even if not always for individual constituencies, then this analysis of Reform UK impact is worth paying attention to. So with Reform UK standing, the poll says the Tories would win 98 seats, with a further 90 seats only being lost by up to five points. In other words, very much in the balance, right? Because you can't just look, oh, it says they'll win this many seats. I mean, if, the, if there's a seat, it's saying it'll only lose by a, a few votes. It could win that one. So, you know, that'll be down to local campaigns. So I also take account of the seats where there's like five points in it. With Reform UK standing down, so remember, with Reform UK standing, 98 seats won, but another 90 seats, which are very challengeable for the Tories. With Reform UK standing down, the poll had the Tories winning 150 seats. So basically 52 more, with a further 68 seats within five points. So this is what we can read into this. First of all, Reform UK will help to cost the Tories quite a lot of seats, but they're not going to be kingmakers this time. In 2019, if they'd stood candidates everywhere, as they'd promised to, as the Brexit party, we would have remained in hung parliament territory, ended up with a people's vote and still been in the EU now. So they had a major impact last time, huge. This time they won't. It's just extra pain for the Tories. It will not stop Labour winning a majority more than large enough to get their legislation passed with ease. But there's something else as well. When you forget about just the seats that the poll says the Tories will win, if you include the seats, it says they will win plus the ones it says they will narrowly lose and are therefore up for grabs. It's not that much different. So Reform UK don't make that much of a difference. Basically, Reform UK, according to this poll, are really just going to swing a few dozen very tight contests. If the Tories had not gifted Tice's party such easy campaign lines, it looks like Reform UK would have had no serious impact on this election at all. As it is, and as things are going, it's still not going to have a major impact on the functioning or the form of the next parliament. Unless, of course, tactical voting groups really cut through in a big way, and this causes the Lib Dems to get within striking distance of enough seats to maybe form the official opposition. Now, if that happens, and people are working very hard to make it happen, then Reform UK could be the difference between the Tories being the official opposition and having the opportunity to rebuild and form a government again in the future, which they'll still squander for a few years, I bet, and being in third or even fourth place and at risk of fatal and permanent collapse. A second little googly could be Nigel Farage making a frontline appearance. Previous polling has shown that his leading the party would boost Reform UK, although it's worth pointing out, I, I wouldn't overstate that too much now because Reform UK's polling has since, national polling has since increased without Nigel Farage taking that frontline role. And I think they're now getting quite close to the proportion of voters who approve of them already. So I'm not sure there's that much more scope to go up in the polls much more. But the poll does confirm that the Tories have no route to saving themselves via a strategy of just appeasing Reform UK and trying to delay until autumn in the hope that Nigel Farage will be in America grifting on the US presidential campaign circuit. Basically, the Tories are going to get hammered. They've been getting everything wrong. They've failed to recognise the genuine electoral obstacles and have been chasing shadows and they're going to pay the price. That's what we can take from this poll. Just try to avoid it 
uh, using it for tactical voting purposes. Uh, get that from stopthetories.vote. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.